This is Unapologetically Ashley, my podcast discussing topics such as dating, cooking, shopping, budgeting, and more, all with a disability. My goal is to show that, disabled or not, we are all the same, and while I may have a disability, it's not all of who I am. My name is Ashley, I'm 25 years old, and when I was born, the umbilical cord got wrapped around my neck four times with a knot, which cut off the oxygen to my brain, leaving me with a bunch of different disabilities, including CVI, or cortical visual impairment, as well as a right hemiplegia, which is a type of cerebral palsy. Because I have both of these disabilities, oftentimes I can feel like an outsider, even within the disability community, like I'm trapped inside of a box. This can be quite isolating and lonely at times, and I can struggle with my disability, but at the end of the day, I'm just unapologetically Ashley. Hello and welcome into episode six, interior decorating with a disability. In this episode, we're gonna be talking about one of my favorite topics, interior design and interior decorating with a disability and how that relates to accessibility when it comes to designing houses not just the building of them, but also how you decorate your home plays a big role in how they are accessible to different disabilities. Now, depending on the type of disability you have, you will have different reactions to different environments. For example, if you're in a wheelchair, you want a home that is quite flat or has things like ramps included, but if you can avoid ramps, you'd rather it be totally flat. Now, because of things like flooding or certain environments where houses get built, you can't really avoid having steps, so you do need to have ramps. But if you can have a flat surface home, then that is your best option. Now, when it comes to things like wheelchair accessibility, as well as things like vision impairments and blindness, one of the big things for homes and having them be accessible is having big open spaces. So when it comes to actually building the house, you want it to feel quite open and spacious and like you can really move around in the environment. Now, depending on the size of the lot that you are building the house in, as well as just when it comes to building regulations and things like that, you can't always get it perfect. Some things are going to have to be smaller if others are bigger and vice versa. But there are things that you can do to make the space feel a little bit bigger as well when it comes to the kind of furniture you buy and how you lay out your space. So if you can't always control things like the actual building process, sometimes the best thing to do is just decide how you're going to lay out your furniture. Now, one of the big things when it comes to disability, especially things like autism or even vision impairment or blindness, is the fact that a lot of the time certain environments can feel really overwhelming. And this also plays into color as well. Now, if you're completely blind, it's not going to really matter as much as if you are visually impaired, but it's still going to play a big role into how you color your environment, how colorful it is and how you feel in the space. We don't all have the money to buy, some of us need to rent, or you know, we can't build our own homes from scratch because that costs a lot of money. So what can we do to kind of combat that? One of the big things is having neutral tones. My ideal kind of home would definitely be something like this, where you've got the plain white walls or cream walls or you know some sort of neutral colored wall. And then for the carpet, you've got like a nice kind of darker carpet or nice gray kind of tones. And that with the white really stands out when it comes to just you know the contrast between the white and the gray. And then you've got the actual furniture. Now the furniture is when I like to really play around with interior design and where I'm my most comfortable when it comes to having it be not too colorful so it's not too overwhelming. But for example, the blanket box behind me, that is a nice blue color. And then you've got, you know, things like pillows. So for my house, one of the big things that I did when it came to things like my living room or this room or my bedroom, I tried to make it feel really warm and inviting, but also very neutral at the same time. And one of the great things about white walls is that most houses you buy will have plain white walls. If you wanna have an accent wall, then go ahead. But for the most part, all the walls will be white in most homes. And I feel like white is a good neutral color. It's also quite clean and modern feeling as well. So things like white or cream 
or light pink or like a soft gray. I'm someone who loves moving furniture around every now and then just to kind of change up the vibe and that really helps when it comes to the fact that I'm visually impaired so the couch needs to be closer to the TV or things like that which create obviously more space in the room but also having it be a bigger room allows me to kind of change the way that I'm laying out my furniture so it's finding ways to kind of contrast with the neutral tones and make it easier for your eyes because no one likes a really busy home. The same thing goes for the stuff inside your home as well, like different little knickknacks, because when you are, you know, being fashionable and you're adding accessories to your clothing, you don't just pile on like three necklaces and 10 bracelets. I mean, you might, it's definitely a statement, but my point is the same thing goes for your house. You just want little bits here and there, like behind me, on the shelves. I just have my A-light, I've got some false candles, I've got a little fake plant, you know, things that make it feel kind of homey and inviting, but at the same time they're not cluttering the space, they're not too overwhelming to the eye, they're more of a statement piece. They draw your eye in rather than just being all over the place. And same with things in this room. I've got another fake plant over here by the desk and, you know, things like that. Just making it so it's not too cluttered up with furniture or too cluttered up with little knickknacks. But knickknacks are good. Artwork is also good. You want it to be more of a statement. And then again, that is perfect for things like vision impairments or other disabilities that affect your brain and how it processes information, you really want to have something be really neutral, like for example a plain white wall and then having something like a really colourful painting on it. That way the people who have a vision impairment, they're not going to get overwhelmed by all this colour and all this sensory overload, they're going to get drawn to that colourful thing because it's the only colourful thing in the room or one of the only colourful things in the room and you know it draws their eye they like to look at it but if it's too busy then it just becomes overwhelming same with things like ADHD if there's too much happening in the space it might be really hard for them to concentrate so just having you know a nice neutral wall with like only one picture on it or something like that is going to really draw people's eye and just kind of have that sort of statement piece. I feel like that is the best for when it comes to any type of disability but even if you aren't disabled this is good interior design advice because when it comes to designing your home obviously there are so many things out of your control when it comes to buying a house unless you are actually building it yourself. So things like having stairs or Things like having, you know, flat land or a one bedroom, two bedroom, things like having a two story house versus a one story house, you know, there are things that you can't control unless, you know, you have the money for it and not everybody does. When it comes to having the right home for you, again, there are so many things that are just out of your control. So what can you do to make it easier on yourself? That is where the interior comes in. How can you make the interior of your home feel bigger if it is a small home? Or what can you do to kind of maximize the space and the environment that you're in to make it easier for you? Whether it be, you know, painting the walls if you're able to do that or choosing a home that has very neutral walls and then putting nice pictures in it to kind of have that statement piece or, you know, if you have quite a small bedroom, having a smaller bed in the room to make it feel bigger. Or, you know, things like that so that you are making the most of the space. You're maximizing the space you do have. You're making it easier for yourself to get around. As someone with a vision impairment, I have to sit pretty close to the TV. So because of that, my couch is closer to the TV. So I have extra space in my living room that someone who is fully sighted doesn't have due to the fact that they sit further away or, you know, things like that. All of that is within your control and can help you when it comes to how you make your home accessible for you. And again, this doesn't just apply to disabled people because when it comes to anyone, 
you want to have a nice clean feeling home. You want it to feel tidy and you want it to feel open and spacious and warm and inviting. So you want to have wallpaper that is neutral, whether it's a gray or a brown or a white. You want to have something that is soft tones, maybe even a light pink or, you know, having that contrast between a white wall and grey carpet that has that nice balance of contrast when you walk into the room. Or having things like a brightly coloured couch and then neutral pillows or vice versa so that it really makes it pop and stand out in the environment. And I think pillows are a great accessory for your home. Just like when it comes to accessorising an outfit, when it comes to accessorizing your home, the same thing applies. You don't want it to feel too cluttered up with stuff because then again you're eliminating that big open environment but you also don't want it to feel too open and too big at the same time so you want the right sized furniture, you want you know little knickknacks that are placed in certain areas that kind of bring the room together things like a false plant that aren't too big but you can put somewhere to kind of make the space feel a little bit smaller if you need it to be or just kind of make it feel more homey and warm and inviting. If like me you can't take care of plants then fake plants are a great alternative because you don't have to water them and they still look really pretty in your home. And again it doesn't matter what kind of disability you have because that can be something for anyone, no matter whether you have a disability or you don't. And for anyone who has family members with disabilities or someone in your life with a disability and you're not really sure what you can do to make your home more accessible because obviously if you have, say, a friend in a wheelchair, how can you make your home be more accessible to them? Do you make it feel really large and open and inviting by moving around the furniture in a way where everything's kind of pushed against the walls a little bit and there's more space to move around in? Do you change kind of where things are spaced? I think when it comes to what you can versus what you can't control, again, especially if you have roommates, you may not be able to control things like the couch because they bought it, it's their money, but what you can do is get a super colourful pillow to really make it pop and stand out that's not too busy and too overwhelming to the eye. And I feel like that's a really good idea for anyone who has very neutral tones in their home. Are you a mother who has a disabled child? What can you do to make your home more accessible to them in ways that doesn't affect you or your way of living because again I'm not saying change it up just for that one person it also has to suit you and your lifestyle but how can you make it accommodating while still being something you love whether it's not having it be cluttered with pictures and paintings but rather just your favorite one whether it's rugs whether it's cushions whether it's paintings pictures just saying to the disabled person hey i was thinking about doing this wallpaper for our home what do you think i really love it the disabled person might say yeah i do think it's a great wallpaper but it's quite a lot especially if it's on the entire walls like every wall could we maybe just have it be an accent wall, like just have it on maybe one or two walls and that way you still have the pattern that you want or the colourful walls that you want but you're still considering that disabled person making your home be something that you can all enjoy. Minimalist is the best, whether it's just neutral walls like white with a really beautiful picture or painting on the wall or you have a wall that's painted one color or has wallpaper that's quite busy but the rest of the walls are just white or a light pink or something like that. That way you're able to have that piece that you really love stand out or able to add colors to your home through things like a nice rug or through pillows that really make things pop or a colorful chair or a colorful couch so that way you're able to have that use of color while also not overwhelming that environment. There you go, that's everything you need to know on 
interior decorating with a disability, how to make your home accessible. I hope that you enjoyed listening to this episode because it is the last one from me for a while. It's the end of my six part series. I will have more episodes coming out soon, but they won't be for quite a while. So make sure that you are following me. That way you know when more come out or you can go over to my YouTube channel and subscribe. That way you can be notified for future videos and you can check out more things from me while you wait for episodes to drop. I will be doing more later in the year as we get closer to Christmas. I hope that you've been really enjoying this podcast because I've really enjoyed making it and I will catch you in the next episode. Bye!